In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's turn to the Blessed Mother and ask for her prayers and her help and her intercession, as well as the prayers of great Saint Joseph. As we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. So why don't we, we're going through a tough time now in the country and the world. Why not give ourselves to this great saint? Contemplate him. This is the great Saint Joseph. Of all the saints in the world, St. Joseph is the greatest. Starting tonight, we'll be celebrating the Solemnity of St. Joseph. And we celebrate the Solemnity of St. Joseph, the Father, the earthly Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. St. Joseph is the greatest. And the reason being is that St. Joseph was given such a sublime mission. St. Francis de Sales, as well as St. Bernardine of Siena, to doctors of the church, make this comment that when God gives someone a vocation, he always gives that person the commensurate or proportional graces to be able to carry out his mission on earth. So with the vocation comes the corresponding grace to be faithful to that specific vocation. And that means in concrete say for example you are a um, you're a married woman you're a married man okay if you're married in the church you are given the grace with the sacrament of marriage to carry out this specific vocation that God has given to you so say, for example, you're a married woman, a married man, and you have your children. Through the sacrament of holy matrimony, God has given you the corresponding and commensurate graces for you to carry out your vocation. For example, I do not have the grace to be a good father or spouse because I do not have the sacramental grace that flows from holy matrimony. I do have the sacramental grace to live out what is called the vocation of priesthood that I have, that I've had the past three, 33, almost 34 years. So where are we heading with this? Well, St. Joseph, who is the spouse of Mary, that's the feast day we celebrate today and tomorrow, tonight and tomorrow, was given the vocation to be the spouse, the husband of Mary, the mother of God. What a sublime vocation St. Joseph was given. And I say a sublime vocation that he was given to be called to be the spouse of Mary, the mother of God. Wow, how, how sublime that is. Let's take it one step further. 
Not only was St. Joseph given the specific charism vocation to be the spouse of Mary, the mother of God, but also he was called to be the the earthly father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A double vocation. Spouse of Mary, earthly father of Jesus Christ. Wow, what a sublime, and I say, what a sublime vocation he was given. So given that that's the case, let's turn to St. Joseph tonight. Let's turn to St. Joseph tomorrow and place our lives under the protection of St. Joseph. I'd like to tell you a story in the life of St. Joseph. You can read this in Matthew chapter 2. And I'm sure you're aware of this story, this biblical account. Jesus was born, and the Magi uh, encountered King Herod. And they said, where is the king of the Jews to be born? Because we have followed his star. So Herod and his household entered into consternation and confusion because they couldn't understand how, how could it be that there's another corn king being born. So they left and Herod said, when you find him, tell me so that I also can come to worship him. Of course, it, this was a a big lie. So the Magi had left Herod. They followed the star and went. They uh, the star stopped. They found Jesus in the arms of Mary, and Saint Joseph at the side. And they prostrated themselves. They offered gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and they adored Jesus. Now the Magi. Instead of returning through the route of Herod, they were inspired by God to take another route, to head back to their country, which could have been Persia. When Herod finds out about this, Herod was infuriated. So he sent out the message to kill all the infant boys two years and younger. That was the order, to slaughter them. And that he did. But what happened? God sent an angel to great St. Joseph. And the angel spoke to St. Joseph in these words. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take. Rather, Joseph, he said, get up and flee into Egypt because the king has planned to kill the child. So without any hesitation, Joseph got up and he fled into Egypt, thereby saving the Christ child from being slaughtered at the hands of King Herod. And he, they stayed there until the death of Herod, then they were able to return, and they settled down in Nazareth. That's why the Nazarene. How can we interpret this? Various interpretations. One interpretation is that we're going through a very difficult time with respect to the coronavirus. There are a lot of menaces, there's dangers that this virus could visit us. What we want to do is we want to turn to St. Joseph and ask St. Joseph to protect us, to save us, to watch over us, to encourage us, to console us, to strengthen us, to fortify us through the power of his prayers. So the coronavirus spreading throughout the whole world, especially in North America, menacing many people and families and nations and cities and towns. St. Joseph, as he saved the child Jesus, St. Joseph can save our nation 
St. Joseph can save our state. St. Joseph can save our county. St. Joseph can save our town. St. Joseph can save our family. St. Joseph can save each and every one of us. So why not make the decision right now to give yourself to Jesus through the great St. Joseph? So I'd like to close with a prayer to the Holy Family. Then I'd like to give you my priestly prayer, priestly blessing. And then I'd like to make some closing announcements after I give you my final blessing and prayer. This is the prayer. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, I give you my heart and my soul. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, make my heart like unto yours. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, assist me in my last agony. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, I breathe forth my soul unto thee. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. So at four o'clock, I'll be celebrating the Mass in honor of St. Joseph today, and I'll be celebrating it in Spanish. Each day during this crisis, I'll be celebrating the Mass at 10 o'clock in English, then I'll be celebrating the four, at four, I'll be celebrating the Mass in Spanish, and I'll be saying the votive Mass, the Vigil Mass, in honor of the great St. Joseph. So the blessing, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless all of you with protection, peace, and joy, and consolation in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.